Theo Robertson saw a lot in his four years as a California basketball player. He saw a coaching change. He saw the team miss the postseason. And finally, he saw the program's first conference title in 50 years. Now, on the eve of the 2012-2013 season opener, Theotis Robertson III has come back home to Haas Pavilion. After undergoing a third surgery to correct a congenital hip issue, the 6'6 six six forward decided that his playing days tragically were over. It was then that Robertson applied for and received the prestigious Pac-12 Administrative Fellowship, working for the conference for a year on everything from press releases to weekly awards to helping man football and basketball media days. When his time with the conference was done, the former De La Salle Spartan decided it was time to come back to Berkeley. Head coach Mike Montgomery, who affectionately still calls Theo by his given name, welcomed the former second-team All-Pac-10 player back into the fold with open arms, creating a new position, the graduate student manager, to utilize Robertson's tireless work ethic to help with everything from scouting to practice setup, with Theo's sight set on one day becoming a college basketball head coach. After you graduated, what was next for you? So after graduation, um, still wanted to play, uh, play basketball. I was actually training in Chicago with Tim Grover. Um, and what happened there was actually working out with Jerome Randall, who I graduated with, and uh, was in the best shape of my life and still felt like something was wrong. Um, so I come back for our senior banquet and I met with one of my doctors that I did my previous two surgeries. And at that point in time, he let me know that I was gonna need a third hip surgery. Um, so that was a bit of a, some tough news uh, to handle at that time. Well, what exactly was wrong with the hip? Was the bone too long? Was that it? Yeah, it was kind of a, um, a hereditary issue uh, with the bone spurs there. So uh, an overgrowth of the bones. And uh, you know, with that, um, all the physical activity, running and jumping, uh, just wore down the labrum, which is the ligament inside that joint. Um, and that really set me back a little bit. So after you kind of realized that's going to be it for basketball, did, did you mope around? Were you sad? Did it take a little time? Uh, well, I, I definitely took, I, I had a day where I completely broke down, um, you know, because that wasn't something I planned for, like, to be 23 years old and, you know, for, you know, I don't know how many years prior thinking you'd be in the NBA or at least playing overseas, um, to have that taken away from you, that was really tough. Um, but I, I didn't let it, I didn't sit around and mope uh, for too long. Uh, the next day, actually, when I, when I decided, that I wasn't going to play anymore. That's when I went to the Pac-12 offices, um, you know, beginning my search to look for any type of opportunities uh, to begin my career after basketball. Did you have any idea what you were going there for? Did you know, or were you just hoping? Was it a wing and a prayer? Honestly, I just went to. The, I just was looking for any type of opportunity. I didn't know what they had to offer. Um, Pat Sesnick, who was a, a former director of basketball operations uh, here at Cal, uh, my first couple of years, was over there, and so I figured I would just go and look for any type of internship opportunities and type of volunteering um, opportunities that there may be. Um, not realizing that they'd have a fantastic program, uh, the Administrative Fellowship, um, that seemed perfect for what I was uh, ultimately looking to get into. So you applied, you were accepted. What was life like as an Administrative Fellow? What, what did you do? Uh, it was busy, it was busy, but it was a lot of fun. Um, everything was centered around athletics, which was huge for me, um, having that passion to be around sports. But um, I think the best part of that experience was um, being introduced into a more professional setting, uh, that's some experience that you don't really get while being a student athlete, uh, you know, outside of doing internships in the summer maybe, uh, but we're so busy with basketball that there's not a lot of time to do those types of things. Um, but my experience at the Pac-12 was so diverse. I mean, I worked with um, our business development team, with marketing, sports management and championships, um, really got a great feel for uh, athletic administration. After that year was up, did you have any idea what you wanted to do with yourself? Or did you have a better idea of what you wanted to do with yourself? I actually had a better idea. Uh, while I enjoyed my time greatly at the Pac-12, the first couple of months I was there, I realized that I still had this passion uh, to, for basketball and to be on the court and be on the sidelines. That really rolled around once the season came. Um, and I was starting to come to Cal games again. And you know, I'm seeing it on TV, seeing my friends, seeing Ryan Anderson play, still talking with Patrick Christopher. I knew I still had this passion for basketball. Um, and at that point, that's when I reached out to Coach Montgomery and uh, let him know my desires to uh, pursue a graduate um, degree um, and potentially help out with the basketball team. Now he says that he came into his office one day and you just showed up. You were just sitting there. You manifested out of a cloud of smoke and you were just there. What did you ask him? What, what was that first conversation and when was that? Uh, well, it was one of their early practices. I think they had already started playing games, but I, I came to a practice and was just kind of watching the team. and. 
you know, we chatted for a bit afterwards, and I kind of just let him know uh, what I was doing at the time uh, with the Pac-12, and um, ultimately what I wanted to get into, and just conveyed to him, you know, my passion to get back on the floor and uh, look for any opportunity at that time to, to get started in uh, my career in coaching. Um, and he was very receptive. We stayed in contact throughout the season, um, and then once the time came uh, and I was admitted into school, um, I was able to transition seamlessly over here to Cal. So when, when, when did so that process started at the beginning of last season? Correct. The, so after that, you, you still had to apply to get to get into Cal. How long did that take? That was actually that was actually a crazy time. Uh, so when I decided I wanted to uh, apply and work over here at Cal, I'd already been admitted to uh, the University of San Francisco Sports Management Program. Uh, coincidentally, I had about a week uh, to get all my application uh, materials in. Um, and so that was a very, very stressful, busy week. I was actually headed up to Eugene to work for the, the UCLA and Oregon uh, football championship game. So there was a lot going on there. But ultimately, I knew that this is where I wanted to be and I need to give myself the best chance to be able to do that. Um, so it was about a month long process as far as getting my stuff in, taking the test, the GRE, um, and then just waiting, you know, waiting to see if I got in and then communicating the results to Cal. So did you actually graduate with a, de with a degree in sports management from USF or was it a transfer or? I actually didn't start classes uh, at USF. I was supposed to start in January um, of 2012, I guess it would be. And um, I knew that I wanted to be uh, over here at Cal. Um, with USF, that was more of a uh, skills-based type program and I felt like the experiences that I was getting at the Pac-12 uh, really had me prepared uh, to do some of the things that they were going to be teaching anyway. Um, so over here at Cal, I found a better program that kind of fit where I was um, professionally um, a little bit better. So what, what, what program are you, are you in now? Currently in the Cultural Studies of Sport and Education program, um, and that's in the Education Department. What, what does that degree do? I mean, what, what, I mean, obviously it's probably very fulfilling having been part of that culture of sports, mm -hmm. but what is... What is that? What are you hoping to do with that degree? Well, it's a great program because uh, it's more of a philosophical approach uh, to sport administration. Um, for me, I think um, taking a more holistic look at uh, intercollegiate athletics um, and being able to better articulate my uh, philosophies and views on some of the issues that are, that are present uh, within this industry, um, I think that's probably the thing that I wanted to get the most from this, uh, being able to understand uh, some of those different things. So what do you want to do, be an athletic director now? Are you going to take Sandy's job when she's done? <laughs> you know, that's something I, I uh, you know, always had an interest in, but I think for me right now, my passion is in coaching, and I, um, I still have a keen interest for those types of things and, you know, possibly uh, looking at a transition um, into that role at some point whenever my coaching career runs its course. Uh, but for me, it's all basketball right now. Getting to be back on the court and, you know, getting to suit up and, you know, put on the sneakers and the shorts and go out there and, and shoot with these guys. What does that do for you personally? What kind of feelings does that evoke? I can't even describe it. Um, just to be able to come to practice every day, uh, to be in the office and breaking down film and learning from our staff, who's incredible. I mean, working for Coach Montgomery, who's a, a soon-to-be Hall of Famer, and the rest of our assistants who are, you know, at, um, the best at what they do, in my opinion. Um, it's been a great experience to be out here and work with guys uh, like Allen and Justin and the, even the freshmen, you know. Um, I think I'm in a unique position to be able to relate with them because I played here and I'm not too far removed. So it's been a blast. I mean, uh, playing one-on-one -on -one with guys after practice has been a lot of fun. And you're able to maybe, when, Co when Coach Montgomery gets, gets on a kid, you're, you're there to say, hey, listen, he, they didn't hate you. Just, just, just deal with it. He, he's, he's doing it out of love. Exactly. Being able to communicate, um, coaches, what coach really means. Um, you know, a lot of times when uh, a coach gets on a player, um, you're thinking that he's attacking you or whatever the case may be. But being able to, um, you know, kind of be that intermediary um, and understand, you know, this is what coach means. Um, you know, if he didn't, if he didn't like you or if he didn't care about your development as a person and a player, he, he wouldn't, wouldn't be, be talking that yet. <laughs> exactly. So um, that's been a great part of his, his job as well. Uh, did, had you ever thought about coaching in the past, or is, has this experience really turned you on to that potential? I had definitely thought about coaching in the past, but the thing for me was I didn't want to just jump into it thinking that's what I was supposed to do next. That's why the opportunity at the Pac-12 was a really great one for me, uh, because it really reinforced that that's what I wanted to do. Um, it gave me a chance to do something different, and you know, within that experience, um, you know, still having this desire to get back to basketball, it let me know that this is absolutely where I wanted to be. So it, it, you did something that you're like, you know what? I know I want to do something like this, 
but I still want to I still want to touch a basketball every now and then. Right, right, and it's uh, you know I think it's the best decision that I've made uh, thus far. I've been really fortunate, you know, with the Pac-12 uh, now with being here at Cal to, to do some very cool things, and um, you know I'm completely happy. Uh, every day I come in to the office, uh, there's no other place I'd rather be. And it's got to be kind of familiar for you because you're you're going to class, you're coming to practice, you're breaking down film. I mean, it's do you ever get that sense of Geez, I've been here before. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's it, it's great to be back here at Cal. Uh, there's a, certainly a comfort level um, walking through campus, going through Sproul, and um, now that we have games coming up, tomorrow will be the first kind of um, pre-game routine that I'll kind of go through, and just you know, having those feelings of game day again will be really unique. Do you think that it, that'll kind of that 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 game day experience when you're not on the court, when you're in the suit and tie or the polo shirt on the sidelines? Will that kind of signal signal the the full transition from uh, from player Theo to coach Theo? I think so, and it's it's been crazy because I'm actually finding myself a lot more stressed, um, <laughs> you know, being on this side of things and understanding that you don't have as much control over the game as you would have if you were a player, being out there, being able to uh, have an impact. Uh, but it's different. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I think our guys are prepared, but it's it's been fun to be a part of the process, um, and I'm excited to see how, where we go this season. What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? I mean, it, this is kind of a new position. Cal has never had this position before. So what 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 is being a, a, a graduate student manager involved? It involves a lot of different things. Um, I kind of head up our manager group. Uh, so that's practice set up. Um, everything that that requires is water and uh, all the equipment we use for practice. Um, I'll come in. If I don't have class, I'll be in the office all day. I'll do a lot of recruiting mail-out type things. Um, I'll be sitting in coaches' meetings, getting uh, learning from all of them. Um, understanding how we put a practice plan together. Uh, I'm in the film room, I'm breaking down film, I'm helping out with scouts, uh, with Coach John, or uh, who I still refer to with Coach John, the assistant athletic director, uh, Jay John, I'll help him out with some of the more uh, administrative tasks that's going on, so getting an understanding of basketball operations. So uh, my role and my experience here has been uh, very diverse and it's been a great, a great situation so far. So you're really doing a little bit of everything, kind of getting the feeling of what it would be like to be a head coach. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, the great thing about what this staff has allowed me to do is they've allowed me to pick and choose uh, some of the things that you know I like uh, a little bit more than others. Um, they've communicated with me some of the responsibilities that um, you know future employers look for in assistant coaches. So I'm getting a really comprehensive uh, experience here, and I'm really fortunate to be here. Coach Montgomery, in, in creating this spot, seems like they had to do a lot of legwork. They really wanted you back. Did, did, did you ever get a sense of how much they had to do to, to, to make everything work? Uh, I don't, but I, I fully appreciate and uh, value, you know, my being here. Um, I don't take that for granted at all. Um, I think it's a huge, huge, huge opportunity uh, to be able to be sitting in these coaches' meetings and learning from coach, um, to be able to be on the floor and helping out with practice, um, helping out with scouts. I, these are invaluable experiences that, you know, I feel very fortunate to be getting. You were part of a basketball program at De La Salle that just spits out D1 players like it's nothing. And Coach Montgomery said the other day that it, De La Salle guys know basketball probably better than a lot of other guys that are coming out. How did that day-to-day -day experience of learning the game in that kind of depth, probably the most depth you could at a high school level, translate to when you played and now to what you're doing on the other side? Well, it, it just created the foundation uh, for all that I do and the way I think about the game. Uh, just understanding the fundamentals um, and just creating great habits um, each day and understanding what it takes to be a great team. Um, there are some differences between the high school level and the collegiate level, but um, you know, I think for the most part, Coach Alaco really instills you know, the basics, and that's what um, really are the pillars for any great program. If you can master the fundamentals, then um, you, know, you can see your program reach great heights. So if Cal's going after a guy from Dale Sal, you can be like, okay, yeah, don't worry about it, he's good. <laughs> well, hopefully, you know, if, if there's an opportunity to you know, increase my role here at some point. Uh, I'd love to be the guy that you know can uh, definitely be the the guy that, that goes over to Dale and gets those players. What are you <laughs> What are you anticipating uh, your role to be during this season? Is it going to change a little bit because of the because of how how fast everything happens? Because you're facing two three teams a week. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm I'm excited about the season. Um, I think I'll have a couple of scouts throughout the year. I've been helping out um, with some of the assistant coaches on theirs, and I think I'll have an opportunity to do one myself potentially. Um, so that'll be something I'm uh, really excited for. 
Uh, but on the bench, uh, I'll have some responsibilities. I think I'll be assigned to defense um, and looking at some different statistical things there. Um, but yeah, it's moving fast. Um, and you know, anything they want to throw my way, I'm more than happy to, to do those responsibilities and very receptive and appreciative uh, for the opportunity, as I mentioned before. Going into opening night on November 11th. Excited, nervous, scared. What 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 are the feelings that, that are going through you just thinking about that night? All of the above. Very excited, very nervous. Uh, wouldn't say scared, um, but excited and nervous. Um, excited to be back a part of the Cal family, being on the bench, living my dream, um, working towards becoming a, a coach. Um, it's been it's a very exciting thing for me. Um, and then I mentioned, as I mentioned, being nervous um, and the fact that you don't have as much control over the game and. You know, you just trust in the preparation um, that you've done with the guys and hopefully you've done a good job and they're ready to go.